Good morning, everyone. For most, Easter is the four, the long-awaited four-day break, a holiday for the worldwide church. They are holy days. And Easter 2020 is part of our cancelled culture, and people are trying hard to make it as normal as possible. Maybe it's putting a tent up in the lounge room or in the backyard, um, maybe putting some posters up of beaches and so on. But it's not quite the same, holidaying with the same people in the same place, same backyard as we have been for the last few weeks. Will the Christian church do something different in Easter 2020? Now, if you just survey most people in Australia, you see relevance is really about that four-day break because, well, if people did catch the six o'clock news and if they saw some footage of the Good Friday and the Easter Sunday sort of ceremonies in the Christian church in the past, uh, what they'd see are people gathering in big buildings, Catholic or Protestant, some cathedral, and there'd be a bunch of blokes in fancy dress, fancy hats, and they'd have, they'd be waving incense and there'd be golden scepters and golden shepherd's crooks and the Pope would have a golden bowl and he's trying to look as though he's excited about washing people's feet who've been specially selected for that job. Because that's what Jesus did, you see. But the average Aussie bloke or girl looking at all this would probably say, well, what is the message? Because usually that man, the fancy dress, the fancy hat said something about, you know, we should love the poor and look after others. And the average Aussie would say, well, why don't you downsize your buildings and for goodness sake, sell all that golden stuff. And if all you miss in Easter 2020 is the pomp and ceremony, if that's what makes Easter, then you've seriously misunderstood the events and the significance of that first Easter. And even though our recent history has changed so much in these, in these last few months, the historical events that took place outside the walls of Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago, those events are not changed. They are historically accurate. And it's that message that has changed the world forever. Today we live with, this, with, uh, with uncertainty and there's been plenty of pandemics in the past, but COVID-19 seems to have created this backdrop that uh, has caused fear and concern. Has the Christian church got anything to say? Well, yes, of course. It's all in this message, this momentous news, this hope of forgiveness and resurrection. It's a message of love because it comes from the God who is love. It's not a choice. It's his character. It is who he is. And this creator God, who has always been love, loved his creation, loves us. Let's turn to 1 John 4 and two things. Look at verses 7 to 12. There is evidence of love. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Lots of questions on God's love at the moment. Why this pandemic? Why isn't there a quick cure? Why does my family have to suffer? Why did I lose my job? Well, where is this God of love? And here we see John saying, now this is how God showed his love among us. This is the evidence of his love. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Now, this life is eternal life, freedom from a cursed, broken, broken world, and it's a world that shows itself in death. Now, God has never given up on his creation. His perfect love means he has pursued us. He has sought us out. 
and he has restored us and he has conquered death. And that's what we need to understand as we understand Easter. Look at his love, verse 10. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice. At this Easter season, I'd love you to read the prophet Hosea. Yep, one sitting. It's an object lesson to illustrate God's love for his people. You see, Hosea is called on to marry Gomer. God says, go marry Gomer. Now, Gomer is a prostitute. Not too long into the marriage, Gomer does what prostitutes do. She, lo- she leaves Hosea and she starts sleeping around, starts soliciting. And God says to Hosea, go find her. Bring her back. She's your wife. Oh, you sure? And that's what he does. He ends up paying a lot of money to get her back. But the picture is our world is us who are so unfaithful who have ignored and rebelled and turned against God and replaced God with all sorts of other things, other gods. But the father doesn't say, enough is enough. I've had it with these people. I've had it with this creation. Forget it. Despite our rejection, you see, you notice in these verses, God moves towards us in the person of who? His own son. Jesus, as he dies, is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. On the cross, Christ Jesus is abandoned. You remember those words on the cross. Why have you forsaken me? He paid the price and he utters his last breath. It is finished. The first Good Friday was the ultimate separation, the ultimate isolation to save lives for eternity and it was a demonstration for us hell is separation from the father forever and that is a cursed place to be and that's a horrible place to be yet his perfect love led to jesus making us right with god to be at one atoned at one with god having his peace, having his rest. And friends, I trust that that's the love you know today, that you've come to Christ in repentance and faith, you've settled, that you if you die tonight or die soon, anytime, whenever you die, that you are confident that you will be with him in heaven. And the evidence for our love is that we love one another. You see, God loves and he sends his son Jesus. That's the evidence of God's love. He sends Jesus. And the evidence of our love is that we love one another. Verse 11. Since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. How on earth do you do that? How do you love as God loves? Well, verse 13. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. And friends, there's lots of opportunities, hasn't, haven't there, in these last months to just show love and serve other people. And it's been great to see that, encouraging to see that. Making sure that people are safe, making sure that they've got enough, that they've got the groceries they need, the things are worked out. And I know our neighbours have been terrific. It's been really good. It's being thoughtful. It's looking after the needy, isn't it? And who would have thought that looking after the needy meant, made sure, made, meant that we made sure that we had enough toilet paper? You know, it's not sitting at, at home looking at the phone waiting for someone to ring us. It's us ringing them. And you see, it is God who says, this is love, that you love one another, be concerned. And yes, a Christian's love is concern in practical ways, but our love is, is, is God's love, which is a love and a concern for the lost, for those who don't know the Lord Jesus. We've got to pray for courage to speak up and to say and to point people to Jesus as winsomely as possible. The second thing in 1 John 4 is that this perfect love drives out fear. Look at verse 16. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God is in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we, we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. 
but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. If there's one emotion that's rampant at the moment, it's among our communities and the world, is it's this it's fear, isn't it? It's anxiety. The world has changed and is changing and has has this change affected us forever? Is this social isolation, this virus that seems to have turned the normal upside down and it's all happened so quickly and what's going to happen in the future? Will we come out the other end and what will we look like at the other end? And there's certainly been plenty of plenty of expression of fear. Now, fear is a good warning, but it's horrible to live with. And that's why John says, God's perfect love will cast out fear. And notice it's a specific fear. You know, it's the fear that has to do with punishment. Now, as you are listening to this, Bialy and I are travelling to the south coast to see my dad who is who is dying in hospital. Now, I've ministered to many in their, on their deathbed or in hospital wards, and fear is a common emotion. Fear of another unknown. Fear of death itself. And what lies beyond? See, friends, it... We have to consider this, that death is part of living, part of life. But if you're in Christ, you see his point. If you accept and love the Lord Jesus, if you understand the power of that, you'll understand that if Jesus died for us, gave himself, then we will rise from the dead because that tomb was empty, just like so many of the shelves in our supermarkets at the moment. But there was, there was nothing there. He was risen. And your acceptance in the kingdom is all about your faith and trust in that event. Your faith and trust in Jesus who rose. It's not in our ability to serve and love. As, as imperfect as that is, you see, God's perfect love casts out fear. Friends, on Friday I received um, the usual blog I get from Manic Tackle Project. It's a fly fishing forum, and it opened with this sentence. The Easter weekend is just around the corner, but that feels largely irrelevant at the moment. Not much of a holiday is it? Stay home. Now, I've got to say that as difficult and as, as hard as these days and trying as these COVID-19 days are, I'm praying that these are days where the Christian church will be changed. And we'll be showing people that we are not irrelevant, that we are not out of touch, that we are not archaic, that we have a clear and certain hope, and that we are people that are driven by love, which is love of another kind. We are not bound by the circumstances around us. And friends, I pray that we will see and understand that, that we, <laughs> we have a hope that is way beyond a vaccine for COVID-19. For us, we've seen God's perfect love. It's been poured out at Calvary and we have a living hope and it's the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead for he has risen. He has risen indeed. God bless.